Now that you've seen how Synopsys tools integrate into an automated development workflow, let's explore how an application security manager can monitor and manage application security using BlackDuck, Coverity, and Seeker. BlackDuck, our software composition analysis solution, enables organizations to manage open source risks in the applications they develop. Let's begin by learning how AppSec managers might configure BlackDuck before scanning their applications to define what open source risk is acceptable. BlackDuck is easy to configure and customize to an organization's specific risk policies, allowing them to prioritize the risks that matter most to their business. To start configuration, we'll select Manage from the options here, then select the Custom Fields Management option. This newly introduced capability allows you to define your own fields for various business objects, like projects or components. If we select Projects, we can see three fields here that help us triage and rank the risk in our applications. We'll explore this more later. BlackDuck enables AppSec managers to define open source security and compliance policies. Let's look at the policies we've set up for this demo. All vulnerabilities with a score greater than 5 and with an exploit available are in policy violation. We'll go into more detail later. BlackDuck Policy Management enables teams to define rules for open source upfront and automate the enforcement continuously throughout development. These policies can be very general or specific. We can make this policy more specific by using vulnerability metadata to create these rules. You've seen how easy it is to work with custom fields. Let's analyze a project to identify acceptable or unacceptable open source components based on risk and policies. We'll begin using BlackDuck to identify and analyze the open source in our application as part of a continuous integration process. This Jenkins project is configured to run BlackDuck post-build in the CI workflow. You can easily configure BlackDuck to analyze the code base when this project is built or on any other event. Let's explore some new capabilities and dig into ad hoc application analysis using a tool called Synopsys Detect Desktop. Detect consolidates and coordinates security analysis using BlackDuck BlackDuck Binary Analysis, and Coverity. For BlackDuck and BlackDuck Binary Analysis, Detect makes it easier to configure and analyze code base using a variety of languages and package managers to identify open source risk. Detect makes it easy for non-developers to run security analysis of your code. The AppSec Manager can scan for vulnerabilities, and the open source legal or compliance team can check for license compliance issues. Rather than having to run a full build, they can use Synopsys Detect Desktop to perform these ad hoc scans. To start, we need to consider the following questions. Do we want to scan the open source directory, snippets, other items? Are we going to do binary only scanning or Docker images? All these options are supported through multi-factor open source discovery capabilities. At this point, we could point to the Black Duck server that should get the results, give it the project information and some other settings, and kick off a scan. In this case, the scan will look at file systems, binaries, and dependency information, and upload that information into BlackDuck, which will analyze the scan data, match it against the BlackDuck knowledge base, and create a bill of materials. The scan takes a few minutes, though the time varies depending on the number of files you're scanning, as well as how you've configured detection. Once the scan is done, we'll jump over to BlackDuck and look at the results. Now that analysis is complete, let's look at the results. We can see that this application is using hundreds of open source components. Many of them do not carry security or license risks, though many have operational risks. As we skim through those risks, we can see that many components have been flagged because they are old. However, since we haven't defined policies restricting use of old open source, we'll move on to the open source components that do violate our policies. Let's filter to see which components have policy violations. The filter clearly shows AppSec managers which components are violating policies using this icon. We can see some components are violating security policies, and some are violating legal license policies. Here, we see tree size free under this Jam software license. This is a freeware custom component that the AppSec Manager added to the knowledge base. The ability to add custom components and scan them just as you would open source is a new capability introduced this year. In this case, the component is violating a policy that says we need to verify commercial licenses. For now, let's override that and say use is OK. Now let's look at these components in a different way. In our policy violations, we can see that a few components are transitive dependencies, which have some security risks or vulnerabilities. We can also see some direct dependencies with issues such as license not found. For now, let's see where those transitive dependencies are being used. From here, we can click on the tree view icon in the component list and see them organized as a hierarchy. 
In this case, we have some top-level components, such as Apache Commons file upload and Node ES API, which are direct. However, this icon here indicates that some children have policy violations. Using the UI, we can follow the icons and drill down to see that tar 4.4.1 is causing the issue, and it comes from this component called Forever. Given this view, perhaps instead of upgrading the tar, we really need to look at upgrading Forever to make sure that we resolve this issue. As you can see, this project has a number of problems, some of which we've decided to track as issues and take through a formal workflow. Let's look at those issues and the tickets we've created in our issue management system, in this case, JIRA. The scan automatically created a number of tickets for these issues. Some are vulnerabilities, some for policy violations, and so on. To see an issue in JIRA, we click to go to the ticket in JIRA. This issue, for example, is a security vulnerability ticket with medium priority. You can configure BlackDuck to support basically any type of workflow you'd like to create in JIRA itself, and support for JIRA Cloud was added in 2019. You can see here in this ticket that we can see the remediation advice from BlackDuck as well as the license information. All this links back to the application should we desire more details. Now that you've seen how easy it is to detect vulnerabilities as well as license and operational risks, let's look at some of the detailed information that can help you resolve those issues. BlackDuck provides a wealth of information about the vulnerabilities in your applications. Here we can see various components that are vulnerable. Let's filter to focus on the high severity ones. We can click to see that we're using version 4.4.1. BlackDuck provides some remediation advice about the next version, 4.4.2, which has no known vulnerabilities. Neither does 5.0.5, the most recent version. Let's look at some of the vulnerability details. Here we can see the Black Duck Security Advisory, or BDSA, record, and the CVE from the National Vulnerability Database. Let's click to see some of the details. Here's a description of the vulnerability. In a minute, we'll see how to view the BDSA or CVE record in detail. You can also put in your own remediation information. For instance, we can mark this as something that needs to be reviewed with a target date by the end of the year, and so on. So we just changed the status of this vulnerability. Now let's look at some of the details. BDSA records like this provide significantly more risk analysis and remediation information than can be found in the NVD. Clicking here, we see information such as severity, whether or not there is a known exploit, and availability of a fix. We can review various vulnerability metrics, including detailed metric information provided within Black Duck. We can also access technical information, for instance, various advisories, and we can see which releases fix the issue, as well as patches and commits that have been made. From here, we can also find which of our projects contain this component with this vulnerability. You can also look at the CVE record to review information from the National Vulnerability Database. Polaris is a modern, cloud-enabled platform that enables Synopsys to deliver integrated SAST, SCA, IAST, and managed security testing with both the scalability and ease of use of the cloud. Polaris has three components. CodeSight, the IDE integration you saw earlier in the demo, the cloud-enabled Polaris server for centralized issue management, and Polaris reporting for consolidated access to vulnerability and risk reports. Coverity is integrated with all three components of Polaris, providing greatly improved ease of deployment, scalability, and integration with CI-CD tools like Jenkins and bug tracking systems like Jira, which are available out of the box as dedicated plugins. Polaris also simplifies and streamlines issue management and triage workflow for developers and security managers alike so they can prioritize and fix critical issues faster. Coverity on Polaris is deployed as a cloud-based solution, which means that application security managers see results and value dramatically faster because they don't have to worry about managing the overhead that comes with spinning up infrastructure and other associated costs to set it up on-premises. Setup is as simple as logging in, we've logged into the systems here, and downloading and installing the CLI for your preferred operating system. This CLI enables you to capture source code to analyze. Alternatively, teams can use our CI plugins, which fall in the CLI as well, or the desktop app to run simple scans on an ad hoc basis. Since the Coverity analysis engines run on a highly available cloud platform, Coverity on Polaris can easily scale to thousands of projects and millions of lines of code with high performance and uptime. In the Polaris interface, you can see your projects and their attributes. This view makes it easy to choose what's most relevant and which projects require your attention, including those that are high priority. Organizations often prefer to start off with industry-recognized priority lists, such as the OWASP Top 10 and the CWE SANS Top 25. So let's get into one of the demo projects. 
Here's WebGoat Develop, the same project you saw in the code site IDE demo. Let's start with OWASP Top 10 and drill down. For OWASP Top 10, there are 31 open issues, and we can see the entire list of issues that map to the OWASP standard. You can change the filter to look at the CWEs that each issue maps to, or use other recognized priority lists. Let's say you want to look at SANS Top 25. It's easy to filter by your application security priorities. You can also filter based on severity. Simply click on High, Medium, or Low Level Defects. Polaris allows you to filter by path, issue type, tool, or owner. If you remove this additional filter, you can see issues assigned to you or unassigned, which enables easy triaging. Let's dig into this cross-site request forgery issue. When we select it, we get detailed guidance, the description, localized effect, and whether it's related to a specific taxonomy. For example, this issue is related to CWE352, identified by Coverity a few months ago, and it has a severity level of high. The code snippet here helps you understand potential triage options. You can also reassign issues. Let's reassign the issue from the current owner to someone else. These triage actions are easy to do right in the Polaris user interface. Here's the issue history and the audit log to help you understand changes that have happened over time. The screen provides you all the relevant data for this defect. Coverity on Polaris also provides a comprehensive workflow between the code site IDE plugins and the central server. To ensure proper triaging and remediation, application security managers can monitor and review any issues triaged by developers. To demonstrate, let's go to the issues view here and start grouping them based on code paths just to try and open up the same file we had in the IDE. We now find the SQL injection that has gone through some activity and it is currently undismissed. If the developer dismisses this defect from the IDE and adds a comment as a security admin because of the workflow capabilities, I see the defect status automatically changing to dismissed and showing the same comment, NA for the current release, that was specified by the developer. This way, security admins can monitor and review dismissals made by development so that incorrect changes don't make their way into production. Coverity on Polaris gives you an intuitive way to prioritize defect remediation. Here on the Summary tab, you can see how many issues have been introduced over time. Application security managers can use these graphs as a starting point to understand the baseline and fix the problems in this application. Let's view high severity defects and go through that list. Another option is issues by file path. These graphics are a great way for security managers to understand where they should start with remediation efforts. Coverity on Polaris also provides security admins access to code site usage graphs. Here we can see developers' use of code site for this Java test application. This information helps security practitioners understand the trend line for issues created during coding. It also helps managers justify the investment needed to move security into development with a bird's eye view into the count of created and closed defects over three months. In this example, we can see a cause for concern in this Java test application. Defect count is going up over time, but no one is actually fixing the defects. With this information, the security manager can have a conversation with the engineering manager for this application about why new issues are appearing and old issues aren't getting resolved. We've gone over how an application security manager might use our Black Duck and Coverity products. Let's explore how they might use our interactive application security testing solution, Seeker. In this section, we'll explore Seeker's core capabilities, as well as some new and unique capabilities. Let's start with Seeker agent deployment. We'll look at how to quickly and easily instrument the application WebGoat. To instrument WebGoat, we start by passing these arguments, including the path to the Seeker agent. Agents can be set up in many ways using this user interface. Simply choose the agent-friendly name, project, technology, target platform, and web server. You can also set up Seeker agent deployment using APIs. Begin by downloading the agent using these APIs. Then start the application by passing the path to the agent as the command line parameter. Seeker can also instrument applications running in cloud environments, such as Pivotal Cloud Foundry, Microsoft Azure, and AWS Lambda. Here, we've got the WebGoat application running with the Seeker agent. Let's see how Seeker detects vulnerabilities in the application without requiring any application or source scanning. As you can see, there aren't any vulnerabilities in WebGoat at this time. As AppSec managers, we may want to test the application manually. Notice that as we begin this manual process, we're not exercising any security knowledge. We're just manually testing the application. 
Let's refresh Seeker to see whether the agent uncovered any new vulnerabilities during manual testing. Here, we see two new, critical, Seeker-verified vulnerabilities. Let's also run an automated test script and see whether the Seeker agent finds more vulnerabilities. As you can see, the agent found more vulnerabilities as the script ran. Let's look at this first vulnerability, SQL injection, to get more information. Seeker provides a detailed description, the vulnerability name, the exact location in the code with stack trace information, and the data flow associated with each vulnerability it identifies. In this case, this input was detected when we were manually testing the WebGoat application. You can see the same input was passed in the database query here without sanitization, which caused Seeker to flag the SQL injection vulnerability. Seeker also shows you the technical context and remediation information. Another key differentiator of Seeker is that it's integrated with Synopsys eLearning, providing developers with information that is specific to the vulnerability found in the application. Seeker also provides information on the open source risk associated with the applications it's testing, powered by Black Duck binary analysis. In this example, Seeker identified 15 vulnerable components and 61 open source software vulnerabilities. Digging into the vulnerable components, we see detailed information such as the CVE, the version number, and the match type. Let's explore what makes Seeker a unique application security testing solution. First is active verification, which enables Seeker to automatically verify or invalidate vulnerabilities in real time to eliminate false positives. Let's look at the SQL injection vulnerability here. Seeker confirmed this vulnerability by duplicating or replaying the original HTTP request with a malicious payload to generate an application exception and confirm the vulnerability. Seeker also differs from other application security testing tools with its hidden parameter testing capability. Digging deeper into the SQL injection vulnerability, we see that Seeker automatically detected the parameter account name, which our earlier test did not cover. So Seeker passed this value here to observe the application's behavior and confirm whether the application was using unsanitized user input. If your test cases miss any parameter in your APIs during the testing process, Seeker can make up for that deficiency and automatically test unused parameters to detect vulnerabilities that way. As we mentioned, Seeker uses the Black Duck Binary Analysis Engine to run software composition analysis. Black Duck Binary Analysis uses our online knowledge base, which is updated every few hours to detect newly discovered open source software risks. Seeker reports only on modules that are loaded into the application, as opposed to all modules, so teams can focus on vulnerabilities that are confirmed to be accessed by the code. Seeker gives application security managers the ability to track sensitive data. In this vulnerability here, Seeker found that the application was writing sensitive data, password in this case, without proper encryption. Seeker is the only tool that identifies sensitive data leakage by matching against both names and values of parameters at runtime. Hence, it's more accurate than any other tool in the market for vulnerabilities related to sensitive data leakage. Our customers find it particularly useful for GDPR compliance. Teams usually have more vulnerabilities than they have resources to fix them, so we've added many new vulnerability management capabilities this year to help them focus on the most critical ones. Using this code location filter, managers can identify vulnerabilities that are in their own code, so they can fix those first. Seeker also supports many configurable notification rules. In this case, using these rules, we've configured Seeker to push critical and high-risk vulnerabilities to a Slack channel so that our developers are notified as soon as the vulnerabilities are detected and can immediately start working on them. Seeker can also push vulnerabilities into Jira and offers webhooks to notify any third-party tool about application security status. Let's go back to the notification rules. We've set some notification rules to automatically tag vulnerabilities. In this case, we want the development manager to review medium risk vulnerabilities in our proprietary code before they're pushed to developers. Seeker can automatically tag vulnerabilities that meet these criteria. By looking for the tags, the development manager can easily identify vulnerabilities that need review before pushing them to developers for remediation. Seeker offers many compliance reports to meet the needs of AppSec managers. Here we have OWASP Top 10, PCI DSS, CWE SANS, and GDPR, which we added just this year. We've also mapped our vulnerabilities to KPEC to provide visibility into the attack patterns associated with the vulnerabilities. 
You can double click and drill down to find out the number of vulnerabilities of various severity levels that are associated with a specific category. Next, we'll demonstrate how Seeker can automatically confirm that vulnerability has been remediated. This application here had a critical vulnerability and the developer fixed it. Let's look at how Seeker confirms this change. We have a Jenkins pipeline set up here, which we'll use to build the application again and test it. This pipeline retrieves the code, builds the application, gets the agent, deploys the application with the agent, and then runs tests. Depending on the security testing outcome, the application build will be given a pass or fail status. When the testing completes, Seeker automatically confirms whether the vulnerability has been fixed. This saves you the time and effort needed to close vulnerabilities and offers peace of mind that the vulnerability has been really remediated. This fix confirmation capability is completely automated and does not require any extra manual steps. This time, the build has passed, and security testing also has passed. Let's refresh the Seeker interface. Seeker is now reporting that the vulnerability has been fixed. As you can see, with a combination of active verification and fix confirmation, Seeker not only detects vulnerabilities and confirms that they are exploitable, but also confirms when they have been remediated.